Hey, I'm Donald Bell for DigiKey, and we're here at the 2019 Maker Faire Bay Area in San Mateo, California. We are surrounded by makers and their amazing projects, and we're going to go talk to some of them about what they brought here. Wendell, it's great to see you again. Evil Mad Scientists always brings something fun to play with at Maker Faire Bay Area. What did you bring this year? Um, this year, we got together with a couple of friends of ours and did a little collaboration uh, separate from our Evil Mad Scientist projects. But what we did is we took a vintage integrated circuit, what's called a UL914, made by Fairchild in about 1970. And we took that chip, we decapped it, so that you can actually look under the microscope over here and you can see the actual parts of the inside of that chip. It has fuzzy lines, it has parts that are hard to see. So what we did was we built a couple different models at different scales to show you exactly how what you see under the microscope relates to how that thing behaves. So the idea is, we're looking at this, this looks a little bit like what you see in, in the microscope view, but it's color coded a little brighter so it's easier to tell the different parts apart. And I have these little wire bonds here. These are actually glitter glue sticks. We take those off and you can see inside and you can see the individual transistors. Here's an isolated transistor, and this thing has one, two, three, four, five, six transistors, and these parts are the resistors. And so we can actually identify the individual components in this because there's only six in the entire circuit, and you can actually trace through them with the metal layer to see how this circuit works and build up a circuit diagram from that. All right, I have found Mr. Tube Time. Eric from Tube, at, is it at Tube Time? It's uh, at Tube Time US on Twitter. I've been following him on Twitter for quite some time now, and he's done a, a great series of cross sections of common uh, components, electronic components, and he's brought some of them here with us to share. Uh, yeah, right here in this uh, little pill box, I brought a couple of the cross sections that I used for the series of photos on Twitter. And uh, so here are the lucky attendees of Maker Faire can come and see these in person. And so what kinds of components have you brought with you? All kinds of components. I've got things like LEDs, resistors, transistors, and connectors, and switches, and potentiometers, and, and pretty much every kind of component that's carried a DigiKey. And now my favorite part of this is, uh, let's talk a little about how you've made these cross sections. It is very easy to make a cross section, and it's something that you can actually do yourself at home. I'm using sandpaper, from the hardware store. So I'll start out with 60 grit, I'll put on a podcast and sit down and take the part and just start rubbing it on the sandpaper. Gradually it'll get thinner and thinner and start to expose more and more of the internals. And then when I see something interesting, I'll switch to a finer grit sandpaper and finer and finer and I wind up with about 2000 grit and get a really good finish and you can see some really interesting stuff on the inside of these components. All right, and now, uh, which one's your favorite? Let's, let's pull like, maybe your favorite one out of here and, and take a look at it, if that's all right. I mean, I don't want you to put you on the spot for a favorite, but let's just pull one that you, you feel like would show well. Uh, let's see, so my favorite so far is actually uh, these LEDs here. And so an LED is a component that maybe you've used before, maybe you've connected it to an Arduino, or even just a coin cell battery, and they're really quite miraculous looking up close. So on the inside, there's a little tiny die that actually is the part that lights up, and there's a very fine gold wire that's thinner than a human hair, and that connects the LED to the metal pins that come out of the device. It's really quite remarkable when you look at it up close in cross-section. Uh, these samples, I filed them down so that they're thin, but there's just enough left so that the LED still works, and it looks amazing under a microscope. Very cool. All right, and so people can check out more of your cross sections on at tubetime.us or not at tubetimeus. Tubetimeus on Twitter. All right, very cool, Eric. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you. All right, I am here with an incredible giant animated cardboard dinosaur. I love this project. What made you think to, to make a project like this? Um, I always been doing a sculpture out of project, uh, cardboard. I do like furnitures. I'm really interested about the electronics too. This isn't just uh, sculpture, it also moves around. How did you uh, create that? Actually, it's only the arms that are moving. So we are using um, this device called the Microbit. Uh, this is something that we use to teach very young children how to do coding. Okay, maybe I'll just give a demonstration. So maybe press. So what we do is that this is supposed to be a game where you hack the dinosaur and then the light goes down. Okay, and because, yeah, so because we have two different sets, you can have a very interesting game 
where they can challenge and see who is the fastest. So once they get interested, then the, the re reason behind is actually this is a coding involved. And then children will say, oh wow, I would like to learn coding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so that's the idea. That's great. So on the micro bit, you're using the buttons, yes. you're using the LEDs for the display, and the accelerometer, and, the accelerometer. Yes. and then also is it the, there's like, I think, uh, wireless communication. Yes. Yeah. Right, so we are using many of the features inside, and so you are just showing as a game how do all these features be used in real life. Right. Okay. Uh, and then for the arms, you have uh, servos, maybe moving those around. Uh, yeah. So that one is another micro bit where at regular interval we just move the arms. I've, I've been to a lot of maker fairs and I've seen a lot of a lot of big stuff, but I love seeing it uh, both big and cardboard and moving and with the sounds. It's, it was it's a lot of fun to find. What, what got you interested, first of all, in building your own R2 unit? Uh, I've been wanting to do this since I was six years old when I first saw Star Wars in the theater. Uh, in terms of the electronics, uh, I think that's probably one of the most mysterious parts for people who are thinking about building their own droid. What's going on under R2's hood, so to speak, right? So, uh, what can you walk me through what's going on electronically inside the R2? Okay, uh, so there's a lot going on electronically and uh, you don't have to be intimidated if you don't know anything about electronics. I didn't. The club will provide whatever you need. So I have Arduinos in here. I have all kinds of uh, printed circuit boards that are provided by the club. Um, I have some things I did myself. And uh, this controller was made by a member of the club. It's all sort of plug and play if you want. You could get as detailed in your own way as you want to, or you can go with what the club helps you make. So, and so if I'm thinking about what kinds of uh, elements are, are part of the electronics here. There's like the LED displays, right? There's the, the motors that are going to be turning the head. Uh, there's the motors that are driving the feet. Right, so the motor that's turning his head is the motor from a car seat that makes it go back and forth. And the, the bearing that it turns on is actually from a Lazy Susan, like at a restaurant. Uh, and then there's a lot of different uh, printed circuit boards with LEDs, and I could show you, um, I could turn him around here and take off his back. This is called a stealth controller. It's made by one of our members, Chris James, and that's what receives the signal from these controllers here. This is an Arduino that controls the lights in the front when I open that panel. Um, the rest is just voltage regulators and uh, fuse boxes and motor controllers. So if you know how to plug all those things in, you can get an R2 running. It's very clean the way you've wired this all. And I even like the little the touches here for the, for the branding. Very cool. And now I'm also really interested in the, uh, the remote controls that you, you're using here. You're, you're saying that there's a member of the group that's building these? Yeah, Chris James. He provides those to the, these to the club for everyone to, uh, to use. And they're really great because you can sort of hide them and give the illusion that R2 is running on his own. I'm here with Uni. Uni has a very special project to show. What have you got to show for us here? Uh, so this year I bring giant poke po Pokemon board. So I designed using 3D printed joint here. Look at this. Yeah, and inside there are so many my Pokemon. And these are your designs? These are your Pokemon designs? Yes, that's why the design board is a Pokemon board and they are my animals. I really love design the animals. Yes. And these are all, um, they're like flat pack designs, right? Yeah, they're, right? So they 3D print just as a flat layer and then you assemble them? Yeah, right, it's right. I really love make, uh, using 3D printer and 3D modeling, and Tinkercad is my best program. And then, uh, are these all these designs available on Thingiverse, or do you have them of hosted? Of course, of course. I'm upload everything by video and my modeling. Uh, the site, yeah, here, the, my YouTube, and then Thingiverse. You, everybody can download and make it. All right, that's great. Uni, thanks for talking to me. Yeah, I love you. seeing the Pokeball. Yeah. All right, see you next Bye. year. I'm here with Kyle at the DigiKey booth, and Kyle has a robot, and I'm always happy to talk about robots. Of course. Talk to me about your robot. All right, so this robot I programmed using the Circuit Playground Express. Uh, last year I had it programmed with the Microsoft Make Code, which is a drag and drop code format. Yeah. This one, I, this year, I programmed it with the uh, Circuit Circuit Python. So I was using the Circuit Playground Express and then the Cricut Motor Driver Board in the back there. They're both by Adafruit. 
And uh, I have a friend at DigiKey that has a laser cutting business. So uh, we laser cut all of this and uh, we etched the, uh, uh, the acrylic on the front. And then we can cr control them with the circuit playground on the front here. So we have four servo motors that we're driving, the, they're Metal Gear servos. And how was your experience with the uh, Circuit Python? And I, uh, my experience, uh, it, just to lead into it, has been, it's been pretty fun to be able to use to, to load up the board, have it come up as a USB drive and just tweak the code and just not have to mess with an ID or have to mess with um, uh, reflashing. Yeah. Was that, does that sound like what you were up to? Yeah, it was fantastic. I'd never worked with Python before. I was mostly experienced with uh, Arduino, but so I moved over to CircuitPython and it was a great great experience, it was super easy to do. The Circuit Playground shows up as a drive on your computer, you literally drag and drop the file onto the board to program it, there's no compiling, there's no uploading, it's just instant, so it's super slick to work with. I'm here with Bruce Tom and Maria Del Camino, his creation. Talk to me about Maria. Let's see, Maria was inspired by my first trip to Burning Man in 2009. I came back completely inspired and uh, started working almost immediately on ideas for what I might do. I'd always wanted to do a car project, but uh, I, I've always shied away from hot rod projects. How does that process go for doing an excavator, all electric excavator <laughs> um, engine replacement? Well, you know, it, it's a misnomer to call it all electric because it's electric over hydraulic. So all of the systems on this vehicle are hydraulic. And so the electric motor simply turns a pump and that's all it does. And it really only has to turn one speed, so I don't need a throttle. It doesn't need to be nearly as sophisticated a system as, say, an electric car. Uh, there's no brakes, for example, uh, no throttle and all that. So it just turns the pump, creates uh, uh, 3,000 pounds of oil pressure, and that's routed through different valves, and I can uh, pull off of that the, whatever I need for whatever functionality, whether it's for the final drives, which are hydraulic motors in the tracks or the cylinders for the, the work uh, for the lift and tilt and so forth. Great. Well, I, uh, it was one of the first things I saw when I got to Maker Faire this year was the, the car again and really excited to see you bring it back and uh, thanks for talking to me about it. Thank you very much. Great talking to you. Great. So that was just a small taste of some of the amazing projects and awesome makers here at the 2019 Maker Faire Bay Area. Thanks for joining me, and a big thanks to DigiKey for sponsoring this video. I'll see you next time.